Hi, I'm Tony Northup, and recently Adobe released a bunch of new feature updates for uh, Photoshop CC, the version of Photoshop that you get with the Creative Cloud subscription. So I'd like to go over those features. If you're not familiar with Photoshop CC, uh, the Creative Cloud is a subscription-based service. Uh, you can get it starting at $9.99 a month, so basically 10 bucks a month, and that gives you both Photoshop and Lightroom free updates for life. Uh, it's a great deal. Uh, I don't have a sponsorship from them or anything, but it's what I use. I like it and you get all these free updates. So they recently released a few new filters, some that will let you add motion blur much easier than you could before, add spinning wheels and such to cars much easier than before, and also a new selection tool that will let you select the background of a picture with a shallow depth of field very, very easily. So I wanna demonstrate this, show you what works and what doesn't work because it's not, not all great. And if you don't have the newest version of Photoshop, I'm gonna show you how you can do it with the older versions and that'll help you decide whether it's worth actually paying for the upgrade or just continuing to use CS6 or whatever you have. So let's get right into it. Let's jump into this picture of a moving Ferrari that I have here. I'm not gonna edit this picture. I just wanted to demonstrate this is what you see in a panned picture. The car is moving, the wheels are spinning there, the background is blurred. Here's a very similar picture that is completely still. So first let's take a look at what you might do if you were to use the older version of Photoshop. First you'd probably select the wheels. I'll pick up my elliptical marquee tool here and just draw a circle around the wheel. You can see it's a little hard to get that selection just perfect around it. And that's not even perfect, but that's just gonna have to do. Now I'll go over to the filter menu here. So now I'll go up to the filter menu, I'll select blur, and then I'll do a radial blur. And again, this is what you used to have to do. So now I can kind of crank this amount up or down, and this controls how much blur I have. But you see, I don't have a preview here. I don't get to see what I'm gonna see. I have this terrible diagram. <laughs> and I guess we might as well use best quality. That's weird, why would I want Bad quality. All right, so this this is clearly like a 10 year old filter or something and it's kind of bad. I'll just guess 75 and I'll click okay. And all right, maybe that's not quite as much as I wanted to do. So if I want to change that, I have to go back in and do filter, blur, radial blur. And now instead of 75, maybe I'll just pick 45. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's see what we can do with the new blurring feature. First I'll deselect that and go to the filter menu, blur gallery. Spin blur, this is the new feature. Look at this, oh, it's giving me a nice control. Previews, so I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit to make it a little easier. I'm holding on the space bar to give me that hand. So now I can just grab the edges here and kind of squeeze it in, make it about the shape of the tire. Well, you can see the computer's working pretty hard. So I'm gonna drag this right to the hub of the wheel there, right in the center. And you can see it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but I don't want mine to be. I'm finding this a lot easier to use than the uh, elliptical selection tool. And again, I got the job done in the old version. It just took me a little bit longer. Okay, so now I have that selected and you can see a preview in real time. And right over here in the spin blur option box here, I can crank the spin blur down and see exactly how much spin I'm getting, or I can crank it all the way up. And I get real time previews of this. Okay, so that, that's pretty good. That shows motion, but you can still see that prancing pony just a little bit in there. All right, so I'll click OK to accept that. And so now you can see before and after. They don't look especially different. Both got the job done, but the new filter was definitely easier to do. So let's pull up the quick selection tool, and I'm just gonna real quickly select the background because I wanna blur the background too. And we'll also do that in two different ways. All right, I'll just circle these last few things up here. All right, so now I have the whole background selected. So this is the old way to do it, going up to the filter menu, then I'm picking blur and then motion blur. And you can see this dialogue is pretty old. 
I can kind of pan around here and see part of the background. So I can see a small window, um, but I can't even make it bigger. You know, it's just kind of, maybe I want to really blur this pole here. I can view that one little window on it and then pick how much exactly I want it to blur. And then I'm just going to try to make it match the angle of the car. That's too much. All right, that's pretty good. So I'll click OK. And here we have a moving car. Not bad, and it didn't take too long. Uh, that's using the old tool. So I'll bring up the history window. And let's just go back in time a little bit to before the motion blur. And I'll do it again with the new path blur. And it does a lot of the same things. You can see the controls over here. Uh, I can do a basic blur or a rear sync flash, and I can control the speed of it. And this allows me to control the angle. So I found this to be much easier to use as far as setting the angle to be the same because I can just kind of match the angle of the road. In fact, I'll just drag it right down to the line of the grass here. There you go. So now I can more precisely match the angle and I don't have to kind of eyeball it. And I can decide just how much blur I wanted. Notice that it's also doing a much better job of the blur. The motion blur smeared the car into the blur, and this is not. So we don't see red being streaked out into the grass. It's a much more realistic blur. And you can see taper kind of controls just how much of the motion appears. Now, this picture ended up looking pretty good. You can also curve the blur, and that would be good if you, for, for example, blurring something for an athlete that was running and uh, jumping or following a curved pathway, and that's something that you couldn't do with motion blur, and that looks crazy with this car, so I'll go back to a straight line. But for me, the path blur is a far more useful and realistic feature than using the motion blur. Yeah, apparently this is super computationally intense. The motion blur did not take nearly this long. So you can see my selections weren't perfect. I just did a rough job of it, but I think it would be very easy to get a really nice effect. And those tools can also output to layers and paths and such. Anyway, I find both of those tools useful. Whether it's worth upgrading is a question that only you can answer, but I think they do things uh, better and more effectively than in the past. And if it can save you time, then it can save you money, right? Let's take a look at that new uh, blur selection tool. I'll switch to a different picture here that has a nice background blur. So what we want to do is just select the background. Maybe we want to change the color. Maybe we want to blur it even more. So I'll go up to the select menu this time and then pick focus area right in the color range there. And you see it kind of tries to automatically calculate something. It's working for a moment here, and pretty soon it will show me what it thinks is the difference between the foreground and the background. And you can see for the left side here, it did an okay job. It decided the bird here is sharp and the background here is blurry, so that's why it's showing up as white, because it's showing me what I want. Now I have to kind of go and tell it what else should be added to it. So I'll click the little subtract selection tool here, or I could hold down the Alt key, but I'll just click it. And I'm just going to go through and try to highlight the areas that should be out of focus. Let it work a little bit. It does a pretty good job of guessing. Make my tool a little bit bigger. Don't you wish it were that easy? And I want to try to deselect this branch a little bit, so. Okay, so you can see it's kind of working. It's not brilliant. <laughs> it's doing okay. But honestly, this kind of seems like a lot of work to me. Because it didn't do a great job of automatically selecting it, and then I really had to clue it in where the stuff that was in sharp was supposed to be. Yeah, maybe I want the tail down here too. Now it did this, and I don't want that. And you can see like it missed this area behind the bird. 
So I'll just color that in and then, you know, it's pretty smart about it. Now you can output it to the selection, which is the default, or you can put it to a new layer with a layer mask, which is what I would normally do. You can select the soften edge checkbox and it will basically just blur the edge. It does what you would think. Now, the best tool here is the refine edge tool. I'll open this up and it's the same refine edge tool that you've used in the past. And I use this all the time. I love it. I turn on the smart radius and then I kind of just crank this up until I see that Photoshop is doing smart stuff with the selection. You know, what I'm gonna be looking for is the, the edges of the bird here. Does it pick up the stray feathers that start to come off? And you can see some of that around the beak here are starting to show up and that's a good thing. So that was before the refined mask and that's after. It really seems like the refined mask is doing most of the work here and that's a tool that's been in Photoshop for several different versions. So I'll click OK here. And so now you can see we have a new layer with a layer mask showing just my sharp selected, uh, my background is hidden. So what can I do now that I have the background separated? Whatever I want. I can change the color, I could blur it more. Uh, so let's go in and I'll manipulate it a little bit just to demonstrate that. I'll go up to the filter menu here and we can do blur and just do a lens blur. And let's just blur it like crazy. Just go for some maniac shallow depth of field. So you can see that's without the blur and that's with the blur and it got a little stupid edge glow to it, but you get, you get my meaning with this. You can also, you know, I could apply an adjustment layer to this to change the color of the background if I wanted it to be blue instead. So the possibilities are pretty endless. The blur selection tool is just a way to make it easier to select the background. So real quickly, I want to compare this with what you had to do before this feature came out. And it might even be easier. <laughs> Let's go back in time with our history tool. Before I made any selections or terrible colors, and uh, I'll just pick that magic wand tool again. My favorite tool, the quick selection tool actually, and make this cursor a little bit bigger. And oh, look, it's pretty smart, isn't it? It's just selecting everything except what I want. And then, you know, you still have to do some touching up on it. I'm going to hold down the Alt key to deselect some areas. And I don't want this branch selected. You can see I'm kind of a brute with it. All right, so I've done a pretty good job of getting the, the background selected here. And then I will go back into my select menu and do refine edge, which is, this is the same tool that we used previously. I'll turn on the smart radius here and crank this up. Just until I see Photoshop doing smart things like kind of grabbing the edges of these feathers there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll put this to a new layer with a layer mask. So you can see that's just another way to select it. To me, the quick selection tool for this particular picture worked better than the uh, blur selection tool did. But let's look at another picture and we'll see maybe just using a different picture will work a little bit better. Here's a picture of my daughter looking at a caterpillar. With the quick selection tool, I would just drag around here. Touch it up just a little bit. Get these areas that it missed. Fix a few little details. That looks pretty good. And then select refine edge. Oh, miss a couple spots. Smart radius, my friend. Okay, not perfect, but pretty smart. And I didn't output it to a new layer, but it worked pretty well and it worked pretty quickly. We'll try that same process with the focus area selection tool. It's churning, trying to figure out an automatic focus range here. Working, working, working. And look, it actually did a pretty good job with this one, uh, mostly because the background was pretty clean and out of focus and we didn't have a lot of depth to the picture. We didn't have objects moving from the foreground to the background like we did in the last picture. You can see it still missed a couple of spots in here. It's 
So I'm just giving it hints like, hey, we don't need this. Could be smarter. But I mean, cut us some slack, right? Okay, so I'm going back into the Refine Edge tool. Smart Radius, we'll just crank it up to four or so. So there we go, I've pretty well separated the background from the foreground, and you know, now I could draw in a new background or drop something else in, and, and it did a pretty good job on that one. It wasn't perfect. Oh, look, I thought those blue things were out of focus, <laughs> but it did a pretty good job. I'll just do one more picture here. We can try a more traditional portrait. Selection, focus area, and we'll see what it does automatically. All right, so it like didn't like Chelsea's arm. <laughs> we can add that in there. Make my brush a little bigger here. All right, did a pretty good job there. I'll subtract out this space here. Excuse me, Chelsea. Get the background in there. Get that spot there. Usually these little hints that you give it, you can just do a single click and it will pretty much figure it out. Uh, you can see it takes a while to catch up. Like I clicked all these areas. All right, there it goes. It did a pretty good job. Bring that into a fine edge, get it done the rest of the way here. It's gonna take a little more probably. All right, not perfect, but not bad. You always end up having to do a little bit of touching up. You just want the automatic tools to get you most of the way there. And so for me, the new radial blur tool and the new motion blur tool, they have the path blur and spin blur tools. They are definitely huge upgrades over the old filters that which seemed totally old and outdated now. So I love those. The blur selection tool, take it or leave it. I, I don't think I'll end up using it. I think I'll just end up continuing to use the uh, quick masking tool because that works out really great. If you like this video, you should be looking forward to our Lightroom and Photoshop DVDs, which are coming out real soon. So stay tuned for that. And also check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which will teach you actual photographic techniques so you can take great pictures. And don't forget my photography buying guide, which has tons of info about all the new cameras and lenses and flashes and studio lights and everything else you need to buy to make amazing photos. Thanks so much. And if you want more free videos, please do click subscribe. And if you have a question, leave a comment and I will get back to you. Share with your friends.